As an anime YouTuber, it's not every day that you end up talking about the highest grossing film of the last year. Demon Slayer Mugen Train has become more than just a film, but instead a mega hit phenomenon, with industry people likely deep in research trying to figure out how to attain even a fraction of its success. There have been multiple theories. The most common was coincidental timing. The state of emergency had dropped a bit earlier in the year, and both kids and adults alike were finally starting to feel comfortable enough to return to the theatre. But even that doesn't account for all those numbers. There have also been cultural discussions about the value of family and that the film contains many scenes about parenthood. But there's also lots of films about parenthood and Demon Slayer was a box office hit from its very debut, before word of mouth had even begun to spread. My opinion is that there was a mix of reasons. Of course, the timing, but also the popularity of the rebroadcast of the TV series, the sustaining popularity of the manga, and most importantly, at least in my view, the work of its unbeatable creative team at Youth Table. You step into a movie theatre and you see this poster and you see this trailer. How do you not go in and watch? Before now, Yufatable's cinematic offerings have been entrenched in the works of Type Moon and Kinokonatsu, a particularly otaku-focused creator with an audience generally consisting of teenagers and young adults. But despite all of its demon decapitations and self-harm, Japanese audiences generally decided that yes, Demon Slayer would be a film for the whole family, despite it getting an R18 rating in the United States. For reference, Demon Slayer and a lot of other violent films are G-rated in Japan. I mentioned the appeal of the poster, but really I want to talk about the appeal of Akira Matsushima's character art. It was already one of the high points of the TV series, but the film gave Yufatable the opportunity to share his work across the city. Convenience stores, train stations, vending machines, images of these characters were inescapable for months, and I still can't go a day without seeing Demon Slayer character art. The trailer was also omnipresent, showcasing the best of Yufatable's work on the film. This was their first time in the mainstream, and unlike other popular shows, the distinct digital cinematic effects of Demon Slayer stood out. Yuichi Terao continues to lead the digital team as the compositing director, making the entire film feel like it was shot with a real camera. Meshing together 3D backgrounds and 2D characters, the camera basically has free reign, an advantage Yufatable was able to lord over other teams. The studio is built collaboratively. While they employ freelancers like other companies, unlike others, most of the creative team are salaried members of Yuvitable as a studio. It's probably a bit early in the video to already be talking about working conditions, but while the industry is going through an overproduction crisis, some studios have decided to take on more work than they can actually handle, relying on overworking their staff and others to handle this. And when they make a profit, they just put that back into making even more shows. Okay, yes, I'm talking about MAPPA. But Yufatable's massive financial success with Demon Slayer, I feel, is a good thing. With all their success over the years, they've instead worked to invest in their team rather than investing in more shows. In fact, they're actually releasing less minutes of overall animation these days compared to a few years back. Yufatable's CEO is so dedicated to investing in his team that he was charged with evading tax in 2020 for doing just that. He has now paid it back and it obviously was a bad thing, but in an industry where animation studios often struggle to keep afloat, these actions do make sense in context. I'm kind of speaking optimistically here, but also regarding working conditions, last year a female ex Table animator revealed that the company is particularly harsh when it comes to women wanting to take maternity leave. Even when an anime company is able to avoid so many industry pitfalls, it seems there's always some way to screw over their artists. 
Demon Slayer in itself is kind of a mixed bag of an anime film. It adapts the source material beautifully, using the train as the perfect playground for dynamic anime action. The rows of seats and enclosed space are perfect for grand symmetrical shots like these, where a character can take centre frame. Action choreography is a big part of Youth Table Productions, and they're often created in CG first to get an idea of how all this character action can match the movements of the camera. It's then up to the 2D animators to add their own sense of flair and personality. But at the same time, the film also has issues in that it is an adaptation. Of course, the manga is now finished, and fans are eager to see more of the story get animated, but it has a habit of slowing down the visual pacing. It's not uncommon for striking action scenes to get interrupted or slowed down to include a piece of essential dialogue or internal monologue from the book. You also get loud shouting bits with simple animation and a stock background. It's a part of the manga's framing, but it kind of distracts from what is otherwise well-paced cinematic storytelling. Of course, this wouldn't be a problem with an original film, which would let the creative team develop their own unique narrative arc, and significantly, scenes that rely on visual storytelling alone. I'm still a huge fan of the opening scene of One Piece Strong World, for instance. But of course, I'm in the minority for this. Most people are looking to see the story advance, especially since they still have two thirds of the story left to go and Yufa Table generally takes their time, especially since their place on the production committee gives them the influence to give themselves a more generous schedule. The result is the TV anime, leveled up, and so it matches the quality of the best of the series up until now. One of the big parts of that is the return of Nozomu Abe. He's basically known for creating the best cuts for major shows and films, and he's been a frequent guest at Yufa Table, where his drawn effects work and the studio's VFX combines for maximum impact. In the original TV series, he drew the decapitation in episode 19, and in the film, he returned with a 50 second sequence where Rengoku slices into a rocker, spilling out a mixture of blood and sparks. Abe cuts are meant to be the most memorable parts of an anime, and he's achieved that yet again. But Mugen Train isn't just about fighting. In fact, there were several parts that had people crying their eyes out in the theater. This is the result of a bunch of emotional flashbacks that occur throughout the film. While Inosuke got to live out his dreams of being an actual boar man, and Zenitsu finally achieved some semblance of undeserved happiness. I mean, who even likes Zenitsu? It was Tanjiro reuniting with his family that really struck a chord, delivered through excellent character animation. I've talked about the appeal of Akira Matsushima's character designs before, and I really think it's these big wide eyes with thick distinct outlines that sell these emotional beats along with the music and voice acting. Yufa Table is in the best place it's been in a while, but that in itself gives Demon Slayer a lot to live up to. Just a couple months ahead of the Demon Slayer film's release, the team also released the final part of their magnum opus, Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel, a trilogy of films that represents the best of what this team can accomplish. And because of the proximity between the two film's releases, it's hard not to compare the two and Demon Slayer doesn't come out favourably. Heaven's Feel has monopolised the time of many of the studio's best creators for a while, despite obviously being less popular than their Shonen Jump adaptation. But that's kind of not the point. For the Yufa Table team, their collaborations with Type Moon are solid gold, and have been a part of shaping the studio's brand for over a decade. And to its advantage, since Heaven's Feel's source material is a visual novel, there's a lot more opportunities for this team to create their own kind of action set pieces. This has been harder to achieve on Demon Slayer in that it's directly adapting a manga, a constant visual reference that's hard to veer too far from. They have managed to achieve incredible things throughout both the TV series and the film, but my hopes for season 2 is that they're able to move things even further. Manga fans can be protective of the source material, but in this case, any visual changes that the creators make will only be for the better, and Heaven's Feel proves that they can be trusted to achieve great things. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect. And for the record, that Zenitsu t shirt is the cheapest thing I've ever bought. It was at a bargain bin at Uniqlo, and I bought it for comfort not style. But before I go, I'd like to thank these incredible people who support the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank Austin Hardwick, Dedemit, Eddie Leheka, Edwin Shale, Equinoctes, Faux Wizard, Frizzy Canadian, Frogkun, 
Fuji, Jacob Bosley, GR Pictures, My Own Mother, Nolan Soga, Quentin Alkin Smith, Robert Miller, Ryan Taylor, and Tom Roman. If you want to see more videos like this, then please consider visiting patreon.com slash the Caterpillar Effect. Oh.